How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jamluka, and I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada. Now, I don't know how many of you have been around for long enough to remember this, but when I first started putting videos here on YouTube, some of my earliest videos were about the MCAT, but specifically, they were about the MCAT car section and how I was able to raise my score on MCAT cars from a 125 all the way up to a 131, or at the time, it was the 99th percentile on the car section of the MCAT. So I put that video out a number of years ago, and since then, I've had many students reach out to me saying that they got some crazy scores with cars using my method. We have 129s, 130, 131, 132, perfect scores on cars. But a few weeks ago now, I was actually contacted by a student that reached out to me that didn't just get a 132 on cars, but they got a perfect score on the MCAT. They got a 528 and they attached their score breakdown to prove to me that they got a perfect score on the MCAT. One of the things that they told me was that my plan for MCAT cars really helped them to tackle the problems and the studying part of getting ready for MCAT cars. So I'm making this video again today to try to get everybody ready for the MCAT car section coming up. This video is going to be for anyone looking to achieve a really high score, upwards of 130, 131, 132, hopefully using this method here. Now I'm going to try and make this explanation as simple and as short as is possible, but when it comes to improving your MCAT car section, all you need to do is think about it in the context of what I call the four pillars of MCAT cars, all underneath this central philosophy of what you need to remember when you're studying. Now the central philosophy for MCAT cars is that cars is the most resistant section to improvement and cars obviously being the critical analysis and reasoning section of the MCAT and it's resistant to improvement because this is not a section that you could get a 125 on and then cram your hardest for one weekend and improve that score to a 131. It doesn't typically work like that and I've seen that in both my own study and also now working with many students over the years but instead the plan that I developed for MCAT cars is going to take place with hours and hours of training over three months. For the test takers that are really looking for a top score, what you are realistically looking at is three months of training, 90 minutes a day, six days a week, and you're going to take that seventh day off for yourself. Now, when it comes to the four different pillars of MCAT cars, it's really simple. It's your resources, your accuracy, your timing, and your endurance. These are the four different things that you need to think about when you are getting ready and preparing for cars. Regarding your resources, so the very first thing, not all resources are created equal. There are lots of free resources that you can get online. There are lots of resources that you need to pay for. I'm not saying that paid resources are better than free resources necessarily, but they're not created equally. And I would highly suggest that you save the best resources till the very end of your studying session. All of the practice that you're going to be doing for MCAT cars, I found in my experience, the best thing that you could do is just repetition of practicing passages over and over again, and then going back and checking to see how the author came up with the correct answer for their particular passage. So reviewing after you are done to make sure that you're getting the right answer. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and say the Khan Academy, the AAMC passages to this day, all these years later, are still my favorite cars passages. And there's also Jack Weston and a few other things. Save the best resources for the end. Okay, so good. Now you know my understanding behind cars, what you need to gather in terms of your resources, get as many of them as possible because you're going to need them all. When it comes to the second half now, which is actually putting together your study plan, there are basically only four steps that you need to know for how you're going to gradually improve. This model of gradual improvement in your MCAT cars section score is based off of the same concept of progressive overload, which I first developed by looking at resistance training in the gym. Basically what that means is you're gonna start somewhere and you're gonna get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better over time. And as a whole, when you finally make it to the end of your three months, you're gonna look back and see just how much of a change and how much of an improvement You've made. So step one is that you're going to grab your practice passages and you're going to be doing 90 minutes a day, six days a week, but only doing one passage at a time before you go back and check the answers and doing them untimed. You're not going to put that additional pressure on yourself to go through it as fast as you can. But instead, what you're going to be doing is make sure that you are improving your accuracy. You're trying to get as many answers to the questions right as you possibly can and not focusing on the time. In this part of your practicing for the MCAT, in this part of your study plan, you're only worrying about what whether or not you could figure out the right or wrong answers and not worry about the additional variables of endurance and timing at this point. You're only going to be focusing on accuracy and you're going to do this for as long as it takes until you can consistently hit 
80% on every single one of the passages that you're doing. Once you're able to do four or five passages in a row and you know the right answers, you're getting 80% or higher on every single one, then you can move on to the next step. Now, once you're able to consistently nail that 80%, next step is to introduce a new variable and that is time. In this next step, step two, you're still gonna be doing your 90 minutes a day. You're still gonna be doing one passage at a time, but now every single one of those passages, I need you to read that passage and answer all of those questions while still maintaining that 80% accuracy in 15 minutes or less. This is your new step two. You're gonna stay here for as long as you need to or until you're able to do at least five consecutive passages in a row, 15 minutes or less, 80% accuracy or work with it. See when you feel comfortable at this particular step before you move on to the next step. Now, this is where it gets difficult because after that step, you're moving on to step three where you're introducing that final variable of endurance and you're also changing some of the other variables. In this step, what you're gonna be doing is every time you're able to meet the accuracy requirement and the previous time requirement, you're going to increase the amount of passages that you do in a row by one. You're going to decrease the amount of minutes that you take per passage by one whole minute and you're going to maintain that 80% accuracy. So if in step two, we were doing one passage in 15 minutes and maintaining 80% accuracy, in step three, what we're going to be doing first is doing two passages in a row, taking no more than 14 minutes per passage while still maintaining that 80% accuracy. Once you could do that, then you're going to be doing three passages in a row, taking no more than 13 minutes per passage while still maintaining that 80% accuracy. Once you've done that, you're going to move on to four passages in a row, taking no more than 12 minutes per passage and still maintaining that 80% accuracy. And you're going to keep doing this. You're going to follow that trend until eventually you come to six passages in a row, taking no more than 10 minutes per passage passage and still maintaining 80% accuracy or better. At that point in time, remember there are nine different passages on MCAT cards. So you get 90 minutes to do all nine different passages and the questions. So that means on average, you want to be taking about 10 minutes, ideally per every single passage on MCAT cards. So if you're able to do six passages in a row at 10 minutes each, you're going to stop that there for now. And you're going to be then doing seven passages in a row, 10 minutes each, eight passages in a row, 10 minutes each, and eventually nine passages in a row, 10 minutes each while maintaining 80% accuracy or better. Now I get it, sounds easy enough in practice, you're gonna follow this nice linear plan and hopefully everything works out for the best. But if you're following along, you'll know that 80% accuracy um, really isn't going to cut it when it comes to a top score, which means the final step in my plan for achieving that top score is to over-prepare. This is step four. And what you're going to be aiming for ideally by the end of step four is to finish every single passage and all of the questions within eight to nine minutes. And we'll talk about that in a second, but you're also then going to shoot for an accuracy of 90% or better. And again, this is going to be followed. This is step four at the end of all the other steps. That's why the plan is three months long. That's what I mean in terms of you really need this time to get one of those top scores. The last step is definitely the most difficult, that over-preparedness score. Now, as to why we're aiming for eight to nine minutes instead of, you know, the traditional 10 minutes is because of the concept of banking time. For those of you that are familiar with the MCAT card section, you know, that not all passages you see are going to be the exact same in terms of difficulty. And every now and then you're going to come across a particular passage that needs a little bit more time than the other ones. And that's when it's good to have this additional banked time. What that means is if you're able to get through a passage, let's say in seven minutes, eight minutes, and you allotted 10 minutes for that particular section, you take those three, four additional minutes, you bank them in your back pocket. And then that way, when you come up to one of these passages that requires a little bit more time, you have that banked time. Whereas if you didn't, you would just have to try your best and then skip forward to the next one to make sure that you don't run out of time for a later passage. Anyways, guys, that is a mouthful, but that is the next gen MD three month study plan to a top score on MCAT cars. Uh, I'm hoping that I explained it exactly the way people needed me to, so that you understood exactly what I was trying to say. As always, I'm going to link a bunch of free resources down in the description below. If you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them in the comment section below. I've had a ton of questions lately from students asking for one-on-one -on -one mentoring or additional classes. And unfortunately, I'm getting ready for my own licensing exams and port exams right now. So I can't do any of that stuff. That's why I wanted to make today's video, but I wish you guys all the best of luck. I've seen so many students go from really poor MCAT car scores to amazing car scores, and that includes myself. So there is no reason why you can't do it yourself. It just takes that time and consistent practice every single day, three months, six days a week. Um, I know it's not gonna be easy, but I hope you guys have all the best of success on the test. Best of luck with everything. We'll see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.